Hello and welcome back to season 5 of Hometown Hero. I can't believe we're into our 5th season already and this year it's taking place up in the heady heights of the Vanarama National League. Now, this is a massive challenge for us. There are some incredible teams in here. Hartlepool are in here, Lincoln are in here, uh, Aldershot are in here, my now biggest local rivals. So it's going to be an interesting season to see how we can do. We've we've made some changes to the team. I, like I said, I thought we'd have to have a pretty big overhaul. And we have mostly had a pretty big overhaul. Uh, the, almost the entire first team is different. So yeah, the, the overhaul has been pretty big. We've kept a lot of players as backup, but we've upgraded on them in the actual team. So we'll quickly just go over the outgoings first. Now, we released a lot of uh, youth players. So most of those don't matter. So we will just go over the important ones or the, the guys that were sort of in and around the first team last year. So we've moved on Jack Potter. He has gone. Uh, didn't really play much, but he has moved on. Francis Vincent, who came in late into the season and had that great first game and then sort of actually played pretty well after that, but the stats didn't really bear it out. Uh, he's gone too. Uh, he's sort of without a club at the minute, but... I hope he finds somewhere. I, I do like him. Murfin Man has moved on, also without a club right now. He is gone. I actually still like him a lot, but just wasn't going to cut it, I don't think. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I may I may bring him back just for nostalgia purposes, but we'll see, we'll see how he goes or whether he sign, signs anywhere else. Adam Davey has gone. He did not like being third choice striker last year, so he has buggered off. And good riddance, quite frankly. Um, the only other people are down here. We like we moved on Tom Holland as well because we brought in a couple of extra midfielders and uh, needed to move one on. So he's gone. And Kane Lewis has also gone as well. We have brought in another left back. So old Kano was gone. Now, let's move on to the players that we brought in. We start with the mustachioed wonder of Paul Okoy. The mustachioed magician. The 18-year-old Nigerian has come in on a free transfer, released from a higher-up club. I can't remember which one. But he comes in. He's probably going to be sort of second-string centre-back. Uh, although, with the rotation I, I expect to have, he'll probably still get quite a lot of game time. But he was going to be first choice. But then somebody else came in afterwards. So, so I've brought him in. Next is Harry Smith. He's another midfielder I've brought in. Sort of pretty good in all of the uh, roles that we like in our midfield. So he could probably slide, realistically, he could probably slide into all three of those midfield roles. So he's going to be very useful. We've got Dan Ball. He is uh, a left back that can also play centre back and right back. Um, he's sort of our cover option. We've moved Joe Linley to a uh, full-time starting spot at right back. So we needed another guy that can just sort of cover everywhere in a pinch in an emergency. So that brings in Dan Ball. We brought in another goalkeeper, Charlie Horlock. Isn't bad, but he was only a two-star sort of goalie, and I felt like maybe we could do a little better. A little better. So we we scoured the free agent market, and we came up with this guy, and I I feel like he may do okay. We'll have to see. I've still got both of them. If if. If Grant struggles, we can throw Charlie in uh, and we should be good to go. Now, I mentioned uh, we dropped Kano uh, and that's because we brought in this guy. We've got ourselves a nice little uh, left back here, Mickey Dimitru. He is 30 years old, so he's one of our more experienced player players. But he is just, whoops, he is just pretty nutty when it comes to his attributes and stuff. 12 crossings, so he's going to be very offensive going forward. Uh, you know, but he's still great defensively, 12 marking, 10 tackling. He's pretty much perfect for us down at this sort of level. I think he is really going to be a star for us. Now we come on to a few loans. Uh, I really feel like these guys may actually really strengthen the team, but, um, we'll have to, we'll have to see. We've got to bed them in, but we've got to make sure that we don't sort of destroy the balance because of course these guys are going to leave at the end of the season we do have to keep you know make sure the core of our team stays happy and content but these are the four lone players we've brought in we've got joseph mens 
has come in from uh, Leighton Orient on loan. And I actually quite like him. Uh, we have a ball playing defender in our team right now. And I think he's going to just immediately step in there. 11 passing from the back should make him sort of very a very strong positional player there. He's only got a jumping of nine. But, you know, if he's the one playing the ball, we've got a central defender next to him. He can do all that sort of stuff while this guy focuses on getting the ball out. And also, he's got a great haircut. So there's that. Then we've got Max Sullivan, the other centre-back we brought in. And one of the reasons why I feel like that Paul O'Coy may drop down to a bench player, because this guy is just nutty in terms of his defensive stats uh, for this level. A 14 heading, 12 marking, 12 tackling. His, his technicals are incredible. So we're going to try him as well at centre-back. I am a little concerned as to having two loanies as, uh, as my first pairing centre-backs, but they are really good. Okay? And then we brought in Kieran Harrison. Uh, a central midfielder, uh, one of two central midfielders that we brought in. Uh, this guy's a backup guy, pretty much just to, to fill in any of the slots if uh, if we pick up injuries or suspensions. And finally, James Minishall, another central midfielder. Uh, could start, could be on the bench, haven't quite decided yet. But this is the, uh, the another another cover player for me. Now, there is one name that I skipped. I'm going to go up to it now. He is by far the best player we've picked up this summer. I had to pay £2,000 in compensation, which I wouldn't usually do, but the fact that this guy was willing to sign for me meant I just had to just had to go for it straight away. Uh, he's an ex-Reading player. He was playing for this Trojans team, where I also picked up Dimitriou from, by the way. So, sidebar, this Trojans team has been absolutely nutty, and I've got uh, scouts going off to scout the rest of their team as well, because the fact that I've picked up two starting quality players from a team in the West Sussex Football League Premier Division, a team that has been promoted every year since the beginning of the save, suggests that they may have some ridiculously talented players coming through. I genuinely am staggered that I've picked up two starting players from them, and I'm genuinely staggered that one of them is this good. It's Liam Kelly. Like I said, I believe he's an ex-Reading player. For this level... This guy is just ridiculous. Um, his stamina could be better. So he, he's we've got him playing in the advanced playmaker. And Garnch is his favourite role because he doesn't have to run so much. But we should be good for penalties on the year. For starters, 17 penalties. Pretty decent passing at 12. Technique, 12. Work rate, 14. Vision, 12. Off the ball, 13. Flair, 12. 15 free kicks, 14 first touch. He can even finish. 12 finishing, 12 composure. So he should be able to help out up there as well. I mean, he just genuinely is nutty for for this level. And I think he could be what, turn out to be one of the best players in the league, quite frankly. And if we manage to keep him beyond a year, he's even valued at £150,000 nearly. So if we can keep him longer than this year, I would be staggered. But if he can bring me in £150,000 next summer, then... I mean, there's just no way that we can turn that down, quite frankly. I, I, I genuinely cannot believe that we've, we've managed to bring him in. Season preview. And we are predicted to come 19th. Uh, Maidstone predicted to come just underneath us. So we're actually the worst of the four. Uh, the second worst of the four promoted teams, sorry. Um, although, in fairness, four teams are expected to be worse than us in Maidstone. In Macclesfield, Kettering, Dover and Chelmsford. So it's not the end of the world, but there are a lot of good teams in here. I mean, let's just have a look at some of these teams. Wrexham just got relegated from the Football League. They're, they're odds on to go back up. Hartlepool uh, are in this league. I think they lost in the playoff final last year. Mansfield just got relegated. They're still down here. Uh, Newport are in the league. Tranmere, Lincoln, Telford, Hereford just got promoted last year. So our old arch nemesis, Hereford FC... Uh, after taking a detour of a couple of years, are back in the division with us. And they're already predicted to come eighth. That's how good they are and how well-backed they are. You've got Halifax, Ebbsfleet are in here. I mean, even Gateshead, Torquay, Aldershot, uh, FC United are the other promoted team. Uh, York still in here. Morecambe still in here. There are some ridiculously strong teams in this league. So if we can stay up, just even, even coming... 
20, 20th or whatever it is to avoid relegation out of this league would be an astounding achievement, quite frankly. Because while we're predicted to come 19th, I'd be staggered if those teams below us aren't stronger than us uh, squad-wise. And I was just talking about Liam Kelly, and there he is. In the key players for the teams, he is actually ranked sort of 6th in terms of quality, and he is one of the more expensive players in the league. Like 5th out of these value guys, I think he's... Where is he? Look at that, he is... He is the fifth most expensive player in the league in terms of value. And what a pickup he could be. Just briefly, we've got our expectations for this year. Uh, we're only expected to fight bravely against relegation from the league. So we're not even expected to stay up. But then we weren't expected to stay up last year. We won the d division. So who knows? Like the old double promotion? I'd be very surprised and I'd be very scared if we got promoted. Because we are, are not equipped to handle the league at all. The FA Cup reached first round, uh, which means we only need to win one game because we enter in the fourth qualifying round. And the FA Trophy, we have to reach the second round this year. I believe we went out in the first round last year. So we need to win at least a game there too. So as you can see, this is what we're going to play. It's a reversed version of the tactics from last year. And that's just because Dimitri is the more attacking of the two fullbacks. So we're going to see if we can um, utilize him up and down the left-hand side a bit better. We've got Harry Smith playing the uh, ball-winning midfielder role today. We've actually moved Foster back from his uh, AP role up here into the deep-line playmaker role, which he sort of is okay with right now. I think he fits quite well. I really like him. I think he's got a lot of growing left to do. So I'm going to sort of persist with him for now, and if he struggles, we'll swap him out later. But I'm going to keep him there. We've got Moncur over here playing the central midfielder role. Again, another guy that I really quite like. Uh, some stats that really could do better for this sort of role, but I like him. Like I said, we've got Kelly playing this advanced playmaker role. I do like this guy so much. And we've kept the strike force that fired us to promotion last year. Good old Quiggers and Ramadan are our pairing at the top. Let's just get into the game. Oh, and before we get into the game, it's against Hereford FC. So we actually start the season against one of our old Dutch rivals and probably one of the harder teams in the league. So let's just get to it. There's not much difference between these two teams and it could go right down to the wire. If if had to pick a winner, well that's that's good grammar, I think I'd plump for a Hereford FC victory. Not terribly surprising, they are still one of the stronger teams in the league. I could have sworn that the kit thing didn't work for them. Or maybe it was their home kit that didn't work. Oh well. Now uh, all of those are sorted still. We're going to go with a passionate. Go out there and impress me. The new goalie liked it, but everybody else, a bit meh. So we'll go with the classic. I have faith in you. Almost all of them liked it, apart from Quigley, who doesn't need no uh, encouragement because he's going to go out bag a hat trick first game here. Oh, they're playing the old injured player to start the season routine. It's risky. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off. Oh, Kelly immediately with the backhill pass. Usually I'd be mad, but I, I just... How can you be mad at that? How can you be mad at that? I'm playing Joseph Menz on uh, very low condition as well, so just immediately wanted to get him in the team. That may have been a mistake. Lincoln already ahead against Dover. Newport winning. We're down to 12th. Oh no, 12th. Oh, how, how will we ever survive in 12th? Oh no. We've got the corner. There's Kelly. Low corner. Let's come out to Quigley. That's a weird cross. And it's out. And it's just going to drop at Lindley. Does he just fire it straight back? He does. He gets it up to Smith H. Because there's a million Smiths on my team now. Foster. Out to Kelly. Look at the space down the left. Oh, he doesn't go the right way. But it does break out to Moncur here. Takes it into the box. Drives it low. Kelly is there. We're still going. He's actually going to run away with it. That's not uh, that's not a great start uh, by the main man here. That's not a great tackle either. Is is that? That's a Koi. A Koi's gone for the tackle and he's whiffed it. And Forrester's now in down the right-hand side. Goes for the deep cross. He's actually shot. And G. Smith is there to bring it in. G. Smith and H. Smith, the core of our team. That's a, an interesting loop throw. Oh... It's an end-to-end -end game, this, with all of three shots through 13 minutes. That's actually not bad. I, 
I make fun of that, but that's actually not bad. They've now got two injuries. They're going to play on with the odd two injured routine. I just... Joseph Men's already down to 80%. I may need to uh, bring on old Obelai for the second half. More long balls forward. Do I want to do that? I'm not sure I do. A nil-nil against Hereford would be a really good start to the season, quite frankly. Three shots on target each. No, three shots on goal, sorry, each. One on target. Paul O'Coy with the first yellow card of the season. Kelly, a good corner. Oh, Woods comes out to claim it. It was it came out to claim it low in his green and black top. Where does, where does he go with it? Where does he go? He goes for the long kick. And Loft gets there. He shouldn't have done. Dimitru, though, there to clean up the mess. Foster down to Moncur and to Kelly. Spreads it out to Quigley. This is some good football again. Moncur. He goes up to Ramadan. That's the first time I've seen him touch it. H. Smith spreads it out to Dimitru, who's pushed up so far. That's got to be offside, surely. Yeah, it is. Ramadan scores, but he's about he's about 100 years offside. He's so far offside, he's uh, broken the time and space barrier. So it's still nil-nil. But that was great vision from Dimitri to see him, even if he was uh, three years offside. This is actually, we're actually turning out to play quite well here. Harry Smith book now as well. Oh, and Marlon Romeo has gone from slightly injured to very injured. He's had to be taken off the pitch. That's not a great start for for the, the boys in white. It's weird because their kit wasn't showing up, but it was showing up in the... Uh... In the tactics screen. I wonder what that's about. See, it doesn't show up there. But it, it did show up in the formation screen when you start getting into the game. So I wonder what that's about. Why it works some places and not others. Moncur to Ramadan. What can Semmel do? Come on, can he get his first goal of the season? He's going wide. That's a good cross. Crow is there to get rid of it. Oh, Dimitri tries to get it down to Smith. But now can they break? That's a good pass. Is Lindley going to be back in time? He is. Joe Lindley with the great cover. Owen Evans. Oh, Smith, that's that's a scary tackle. But it's up to Quigley, who goes long to Ramadan, who can't really spread that any further. He does get it to Quigley, who has to go back to Foster. Some good run in there from H. Smith, but that's a good passing. Quigley's in. Woods keeps it out. It's out for a corner. Kelly with the corner. Oh, he's always going out towards the edge of the box. There's H. Smith. Back to Dimitri. Does he get the cross? He gets it back to H. Smith. Oh, Quigley with the long shot. It fades out before it even gets there. That seemed like a that seemed like a maneuver that should have been a full highlight, quite frankly. I'm a little bit upset that that one has faded out where it has. We've got We're actually having a really good game here. We are completely dominating them. But unfortunately, we cannot score any goals. Another booking this time for Dimitri. Should we bring on one of the new guys? Let's see where this highlight goes first. Does it go our way or their way? Okoy with the header. It's into Quiggers. He's going the wrong way. Oh, he's going to go all the way back to G Smith. Who brings it out? He's not. G Smith is not a pink pajama wearing fellow, which is. Uh, a little bit disappointing. Maybe I have to start playing Charlie Horlock again for... Oop, Kelly again. Not another great pass. He needs to really settle in. Ramadan! Does it... No way! Did we just score from that? Did everybody see that pass? Moncur, you can celebrate like that. Look at this. I hope it shows up in the... In the... Look at this pass from Ramadan. And then the shot from outside the box beats Woods. And we're 1-0 up. What? I can't believe Semmel just pulled that off in the Vanarama National League of all places. Semmel Ramadan just scored a goal like that. And we're 1-0 up in our debut performance here. Kelly slides it into Quigley. Oh, he's off the bar. Off the bar. And there's no one on the left-hand side to get in the way. Dimitri is all the way up here, though. Look how attacking he's playing. Hey, we are going to make that substitution now. I think we're going to bring on the Pope. Quiggers isn't having a great game. Uh, Kelly's not actually playing as badly as I as I was expecting. Danny Foster's not playing as badly as I was expecting either. Lindley not actually playing that well. But we're going to leave it like that for now, I think. 14 shots, man. We really are dominating. 
Uh, I suppose Hereford aren't actually as good as uh, their scary prediction made them seem. I'm going to eat my words now. Oh, Dimitri with the interesting header straight back to them. H. Smith gets in the way and he goes for the long clearance. Ramadan, can he keep on that? No, he can't. Purrington is good. Purrington. Wow. That's like a cat's name. Inspector Purrington. Lindley. Good tackle, Lindley. And Moncur spreads it out. Ramadan may actually get on the end of this as well. Semmel. Is he going to pull off some magical pass? No. Purrington. Oh, that's an interesting touch, though. Kelly's going to get in the way of that. Oh, he can't get it across to Pope. It's a good play to be up there, but Pope was just sort of behind the defender. It was a difficult pass to make. Owen Evans. Oh, no, he's all the way in on this right-hand side now. Does he score? No, it goes out for a goal kick. That is a strong start from us. We just need 14 minutes left to go. I Now this is the kind of game where I'd be happy with no more highlights. Kelly. I see he sort of doesn't do anything with the ball again. He can play better than that. I'm sure he can. Dimitru goes long. Pope may get on this. He does get on it. There it is. It's 2-0. We're 2-0 up and the Pope has scored. In the Vanarama National League, the Pope has got his second, his first goal of the season. Sorry. And we are absolutely full, full steam ahead here in the Vanarama. That's an incredible pass from Dimitru as well. And the Pope takes it down like an absolute magician and then just sort of calmly slots the ball into the back of the net. Come on, nine minutes to go. I'm, well, I can't believe this, man. This, what a start this is. Seven minutes, less than seven minutes to go. Joe Crow. That's a good name. I like that one too. Let's make... Okay, we've run out of time. I was going to make another substitution, but this could be it. Okoy, well-chested down. He has proved to have a, a stellar debut here. It's out to Moncur, into H. Smith, who I think has played very well as well. And there's the long through pass. Oh, I thought he was going to get away there again, but he goes backwards instead. Look at this. Lindley is ecstatic with the victory. So there we go. Just a short one episode game today, but we went through the transfers. We looked at the uh, how the season looked like it was going to pan out. And we played our first game where we beat Hereford 2-0. That's a, such a great start to the season. I'll see you guys at the end of the week.